Hi guys, today I wanted to explain to you the difference between leaded solder and lead free solder. Now, I'm going to start with leaded solder. Um, leaded solder has been industry standard for the longest time since electronics have been around. Um, the different materials allow for better adhesion and they also allow for better flexibility. Now in 2006 with the RHS standard which is known as the lead free standard it actually was designed to keep hazardous substances of several different kinds out of electronics uh, obvious reasons um, but mainly the problems that it caused are with the lead restric restriction. Now, leaded solder contains a small amount of lead which allows it to be more flexible um, and it uh, also affects the, what's called the wettability factor which allows it to melt at a lower temperature thus putting components that are being soldered under less stress and also making it easier to work with absolutely um, so let's start with leaded solder um, I'm gonna be posting some pictures later on this video so you can get a better idea because my camera is not the best um, but I want you to see a close-up shot of the outside of lead free solder so this is lead free solder okay I want you to notice the pitting there's a little bit of pitting but not a whole lot. It's also a lot more flexible, which I'll show you later on in this video. Let's flip this over real quick so you can see the bottom. Um, so there's the bottom. This is just a sample that I pulled out just for demonstration purposes, but I want you to see the surface of that. All right, now here's our leaded solder, or our lead-free solder, I rather. Um, and I want you to take a look at this. This has a higher melting temperature, but one of the biggest problems is it's much more dense and brittle. Uh, it's prone to cracking. It doesn't flex like leaded solder does. Um, so I want to just show you the surface of this if I can get it. No. There we go. So I want you to see the contrast. I'll post some side-by-side -side pictures a little bit later on this video so you can see let's see the bottom of this here so I want you to see the large mixture of materials used in this so again this is a close-up of lead free solder which is Microsoft's factory solder and then again this is a close-up of your lead free solder what are the problems this causes well in reference to the red ring of death and the yellow light of death um, on PlayStation systems they're usually caused 99% of the time by this what's called a ball grid array. Now this is an array of solder balls that connects it to the board uh, by use of pads. Now there's a few reasons they do this, um, one of which is to save a whole lot of money. Um, the use of this as opposed to a socket type CPU, if you're familiar with computers, saves them tons of money on extra materials both on the chip and off of manufacturing the board with the socket so um, this is a ball grid array pad that you can see where it would connect to the board now why does lead free solder cause problems well specifically with xbox this is a playstation chip which playstations tend to last a lot longer just as with anything um, when they heat up they have a tension uh, they have a tendency to expand now when that chip expands it puts stress on all these little solder balls over a thousand of them on an xbox chip now with that constant expansion and contraction um, it puts it, it, it's going to create little hairline fractures in these uh, solder balls so why is leaded better well leaded is flexible and it can flex with the chip as opposed to lead free where it slowly stresses to the point where it develops cracks and I'm going to show you the flexibility in a few minutes here um, I want to show you this from Wikipedia this is thermal expansion is the tendency of matter to change as vol in volume in response to a change in temperature so um, that's part of the reason a lot of uh, laptops you know a lot of consumer electronics even your cell phones use this type of package this ball grid array however um, these graphics chips are much larger ball grid arrays than what are standard so these are your RAM bit bricks 
as they're called on an Xbox and I want you to see the comparison. The RAM bricks also have a ball grid array also with lead free solder but there's much less solder balls so here's your comparison right there. So you can understand that with the expansion and contractions the, uh, the probability of failure is much higher and uh, that's, that's why they have the problems. Now there's several contributing factors to the red ring of death. Um, one of the biggest ones is that they have a tendency to overheat. Now um, f the temperatures that an Xbox hits is probably you know at worst 90 degrees Celsius. I believe around 90 degrees Celsius the Xbox will go into a thermal shutdown thus making the concept that doing a towel trick or unplugging the fans actually does a reflow is completely um, retarded um, because as you can see the melting point of even lead free solder is 187 degrees that's twice the temperature so you, the Xbox will shut off well before it ever gets to that point especially before it gets to this point now um, the massive amounts of heat are what cause the problem all electronics now have to comply with this standard so they use lead free solder the thing that makes PlayStation and Xbox is special is the extremely large ball grid array package and also the amount of heat focused on this one specific chip which is why this one and 99% of the time only this specific chip um, needs to be reballed and needs to be done and you can look around um, online you'll see that almost every good repair place in California offers reballs and they will mention leaded solder um, and out of oh I'd say a couple hundred Xboxes that I've reballed with leaded solder I've seen maybe one or two come back and the reason for that is because somebody had previously warped the board um, and caused it to make a bad connection or it wasn't settled in properly so I'll be back in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to show you a few pages online as well as a side-by-side -side comparison of a close-up of these two different types of solder. So, Okay, so now I have spread these out with my uh, soldering iron so I can give you an idea of the flexibility. Now first let's look at lead-free solder. Um, this I have spread out. So let's see if we can bend this. I want you to see how that bends. It bends and then it breaks. See that? Let you see how thick that is. I tried to get them at the same thickness, um, but kind of hard to do this with that one hand. But let's let's bend these and see how easily it breaks. Also, this would be a fresh weld, so you can see it's folded in half. So, show you how easily that does. Now let's see with the same pressure how easily leaded solder bends. Okay, now let's see if it breaks. In fact, let me put my camera up here. Not hard to do this one handed, but let's see here. Okay, I'm twisting it all the way around and it's still staying together. It gives you an idea of the flexibility. There it finally broke. Let's try that with the lead, leaded solder again. Okay. Now, you, I know you can't hear this on camera, but you'll actually hear like crinkling and snapping with the lead free solder um, for the mixture of alloys. So let's try and bend this around. Yep. So you can't even get a bend around because it's much denser and much harder. Um, so that's just something I wanted to show you there. Now I was going to queue up my pretty little uh, computer pointer and everything, but I don't feel like doing that. So I'm just going to show you with the video on my phone a few things. First, this is the Restriction of Hazardous Substances Act, okay? So let's look at this. Um, Restriction of Hazardous Substances, also known as RHSS. It's a directive on the restriction of use of certain hazardous substances in electrical and electronic equipment, commonly known 
took effect in July 2006 and is required to be in force and become law. Now this does have some exceptions in this other, other um, thing I'll show you here. You'll see here one of the restrictive substances is lead. Um, let's check out this. This is from another website. Now this is quoting NASA and it says, the worldwide transition to lead-free electronics has moved at a furious pace. The ROHS re re regulation adopted by the European Union prohibits use of lead among other, with five other materials and chemicals from any commercial electronic products placed on the European market for sale. Greatest challenge, blah, blah, blah. Now, you'll see in this article that, let's see. You'll see in this article, which I'll link to if you want to look at this, and the uh, source for this article is actually NASA's webpage. So, if you want to talk about, you know, experts, NASA Tin Whisker homepage. So, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll post the link on this video. Basically, the only people who are exempt from this standard are military and space applications. That's because of reliability problems. Um, manufacturers consider it consider Xboxes and electronics throwaway items, so it's not of huge concern. Um, but if lead-free was, you know, better, or you know, they changed over to it because it's better stuff, why would um, aerospace and military programs still be using? high performance and high reliability electronic products and here is a uh, close-up of lead free solder and what it does so I'll put a link to this but the only people that are exempt is military and because they don't want their million dollar missiles to fail they don't want their jets to fail um, so if you're looking for an expert on uh, lead lead free versus leaded um, there's there's where you can want to go right there now let's look at Xbox experts this guy lays it out really, really simply. Let's see. <sighs> now he says, Now I'm sure you are well aware that Microsoft is already reballing faulty Red Ring of Death units and sending them out. Unfortunately, these units are prone to failure due to the fact that they still use lead-free solder balls which is the reason for every failure which isn't every failure but most failures and it's one of the causing problems board flexing because of the X clamps which is why a lot of techs used to use the X clamp replacement now let me explain to you the difference between an X clamp replacement and an X clamp fix okay an X clamp replacement is using bolts to hold the heat sinks down and that's just to put enough pressure to make contact between the heat sink and the chip. A X clamp fix or X clamp or bolt trick or bolting method or whatever you want to call it is where you tighten the screws down until it pushes and smashes the chip into the board, which is damaging and will cause problems. But that's why a lot of techs choose to use bolts because the X clamps aren't giving good pressure and they cause board flexing because they're pulling up on the board as a push as a, opposed to pushing down. There's also something called chip drift and basically that's why Microsoft decided to start putting those chip retainers or glue around the edges of the chip because through the heating and cooling cycles it will have a tendency to move just a tiny bit putting it under greater and greater stress. So that's another thing that using bolts can help prevent. Now, this is this is a not a, just a trade. This is you could call it a hobby. You could call it a um, well. It this is something you learn, and everybody has different techniques. Um, so saying there's one good te technique, yes, there are some things that are absolutely damaging. Um, but yeah, so let's check out something else here. Let's see if we can find this restriction use of tin letter. Uh, blah 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 soldering so let's look at traditional rosin fluxes okay traditional rosin fluxes available in non-activated mildly activated and activated blah 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 and down here let's see 
the residue now this is what I use is called an RMA flux okay now the let's see here trying to find the uh, page okay here. traditional rosin fluxes are available in activated and mildly activated RMA and blah 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 okay let's see the residue resulting from the use of RA flux is corrosive and must be cleaned RMA flux is formatted to result in a residue which is not significantly corrosive which with cleaning being preferred but optional and that's why I use RMA flux for a BGA package once this is on the board you're never going to be able to get underneath the board to clean it up so you need a activated flux that's going to give it good wettability and allow it to make a good strong bond but also something that's not corrosive and that's why they use rosin because rosin is tree sap it, be, it acts got interrupted there for a second this is rosin rosin is tree sap and it is only a solvent or a, a acid when it is heated to a certain temperature and that's why it's been used in electronics that's why I use that type and that's why it is safe to use and also safe to leave on because unless it's heated in excess of 880 degrees it is not a solvent it is not corrosive and it works good so anyways I'm not gonna make this video any longer just wanted to give you guys some information there and uh, thanks for listening uh, by the way the the flux that I choose to use I happen to believe that it is very important for a strong connection for a solid connection that's going to be long lasting so the flux I use is actually around uh, fifty dollars a bottle um, I didn't I didn't use the uh, three dollar Kessler brand that you'll see on eBay or anything like that um, I have played around with some of the clear fluxes but I found that a rosin base flux works a lot better so that's the end of my video guys Talk to you next time.